Hey, good morning. Welcome back to the channel. Well, in our last video, we saw that after the LS swap and we got the engine running, after we let it run for a little while, there were a few issues that came up, some things that needed to be sorted out. The first one I decided to tackle, which is the most important one, was the temperature gauge. It wasn't functioning at all. So in looking at my uh, temperature sending unit over here, it's a three wire unit. I decided to start from scratch and I pulled it out and I probably should have waited first and tested some wires but I am going to test the wires that I do have that are supposed to go to it and check for continuity and I'll show you how I'm going to do that but before I do that I want to show you the information I'm working from so you'll understand what wires I'm testing and why and where they're connected take a look this is the information I'm working from this was printed directly off of the LT1Swap.com site. For the coolant temperature sensor on the blue side, uh, the, blue, uh, the blue pin side, from the blue pin side, sensors 63 and 74 are the pins I'm looking for. Number 63 is the sensor ground, and when you look it up, it shows 63... There's the sensor ground and number 74, which is the engine coolant temperature sensor signal. So the signal and the ground are numbers 63 and 64. Now, looking at an actual pinout of what the sensor looks like, or I should say, so looking at a pinout of what the actual harness looks like, there are three positions or three pins. The lower pin here is for the gauge. Signal B, which is over here, is the uh, sensor B is the sensor signal, and sensor A or pin A is the ground. So let's test those wires and see if they're. Let's test those wires and see if they function properly, and then we can make sure we position them at the correct pin. All right, looking at the pinouts. Okay, looking at the pins that go into the PCM, this is the red side, this is the blue side. I've already removed the covers. The number 63 is the ground. And looking on this, it's difficult to see. It's the third pin on the side right here. So I'm going to turn my audible continuity tester. And I'm going to touch that ten, pin right there. And then I want to touch one of these wires and see if we can figure out which one it is. Not that one. It's not that one. Ah, there it is. So I now know that number 63, which is my ground, is going to go. And my sensor in this upper right hand pin. In this case, it's red. So I know the red goes here. I'm just attaching this temporarily just so I know which ones are which. I'm going to come back in just a few minutes and I'll solder those connections and put some shrink wrap on it. Be sure before you do attempt anything like this to disconnect your battery, which mine's disconnected. You don't want to do this with a live battery. Okay, let's check out. Check out pin number 74. Number 74 is, doesn't have an actual number on it because it's right behind this clip. It shows number 76 right here. So back to this yellow wire is number 74. And that would be our signal. Put the pin over. Okay, that's it. Now let's find which of these wires is the correct for it. Oh, there it is. So you can hear that audible sound. That tells me there's continuity and that's the correct wire. So this wire is going to be the correct wire for... our signal which is in the upper 
left hand corner here and in this case it's the black wire that leaves one wire one one wire left which would be for the gauge and previously when i had uh, installed and put this wire in specifically for the gauge uh, i ran the continuity tester on it at that time because i removed the gauge cluster and i was confident that this is for the gauge so it will attach to the remaining wire. In this case, it's the white wire, and that's the white uh, in this lower position that's for the gauge. So I've got all the three wired up right now. What I want to do is, actually, before I even solder it, I'm going to plug it in, make sure nothing's touching, and let's start the engine again and see if the temperature gauge will rise. If it does, then we know we've got the right connections. So I'm going to snap this back in place. Okay, and just want to make sure these three wires do not touch anything. Okay, now let's start the motor and watch the gauge. The PCM and the battery are reconnected and they're stable so they won't fall over. Everything looks good, no wires are touching anything. Let's start it up. Let's see what happens. Okay, ready to start the engine. Uh, I've got the light, that's what's kind of obstructing the view in the upper left hand corner to illuminate the gauge area because it's uh, it's difficult to see, it's kind of dark. And the temperature light is beginning to rise. Looks like we got the right connections. And as we let it run just a few more minutes, we see that the temperature is coming up. It's rising well. So at this point, I'm going to turn it off and then we'll go back and address those loose wires. And in looking under the hood at the wiring, you can see we've got the red wire going here. It used to be the red over here. So clearly these two wires were cross-wired. Uh, the, the, the greenish to the red and the red to the greenish over here. So I'm glad we got it worked out. It wasn't a major ordeal to do it, uh, but it is fixed now. So I'm going to come back in just a minute. We'll get these connections soldered and shrink wrapped. Okay, I'm going to solder it up. And I've already put the heat shrink, the marine heat shrink on the wiring so that once it's soldered, it's there. I hate waiting and forgetting to put that on. The temperature sensor is plugged in. We've made our connections here. Everything's good. We'll just uh, rebundle this up and you never have to see the repairs. Well, that eliminates one of our issues. Now we can move on and uh, systematically address each one and take care of it. There was a check engine light on the dash. I feel like some of the issues when it first started, uh, I can try and reset that and see if it will reset on its own or if it is still an existing problem, something else to check out. Either way, we'll look at that and find out what the problem is. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. Got some ideas on your own. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, get those notifications when a new video comes out. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video.